When I was 21 What's going on guys, Cougs46 here, bringing you another episode of MLB The Show 18 Dream Cards. This is the series where we go over different flashback and legend cards that we want to see added into the next installment of MLB The Show. This series is called Dream Cards, so there are no rules and no restrictions on the cards that we can ask for in this video. Make sure to go back and check any old Dream Cards videos to see if the card that you're thinking about suggesting has already been picked. If not, go ahead and leave the card that you would love to see in the next MLB The Show game down in the comments for the chance to be featured in the next episode of MLB The Show 18 Dream Cards. Every week we choose one flashback hitter, one flashback pitcher, one legend hitter, and one legend pitcher. So we get four cards each episode to talk about as a dream card, and this week we have four great cards. So let's get right into it. Now every week we get suggested with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cards. I see some of the same names over and over and over again. Honestly, it's just a matter of time before I get to some of these guys. I see all the suggestions, I see all the classic players in there, so really it's just a matter of time until these cards get actually recognized in this series. Today the two legends that we're going to be talking about are very, very heavily requested in the comments, and then we got some nice flashbacks as well, so let's go. Today we are going to start it off with our Legend Pitcher of the Week. Now this is a card that has been suggested ever since the first episode of this series. You guys have been hitting it hard. One of the best pitchers of all time. He is already a Hall of Famer. You guys know and love him. The big unit, Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson, of course, a Hall of Famer. He's a five-time Cy Young winner, 10-time All-Star. He's got a World Series MVP. He's won the ERA title four times. He won the World Series in 01. If he's not the best left-handed pitcher of all time, he's easily top three or even top two. So like I said, this card has been suggested across the entire MLB 18 Dream Card series. And in the last video, this was suggested by James Garza, Andrew Martinek, Osvaldo Perez Flores, Elizabeth Castillo, Ian Brown, Austin Hunter, Walker Tube, Glenn Lane Real Fishing, R Dubs 47, Clickbait Gods, Bucket Squad for the Win, Nick Jimenez, Peyton Sauer, Joshua Pritchard, Logan Sepluin, an NBA fan, Toy Reviews 51, Bradog 3272, Vincent Nardella, and Sean Senek. So thank you guys for leaving the suggestion for Randy Johnson down in the comments. But honestly, guys, there's really, like, everybody knows how good Randy Johnson is. There is seven or eight or nine seasons that you could pick from for this guy to be a legend card in MLB The Show. You could even go some of his postseasons, 2001, as the World Series MVP. That could even be a postseason legend card. And 2001 was an amazing regular season as well. 1999 was an amazing regular season. 2002 was an amazing regular season. He even won the Cy Young with Seattle back in 95. So you could go so many different directions with this card. But the one that I'm going to go with for this video is actually going to be his 2002 season where he won the Pitcher's Triple Crown for the National League. If you guys are unaware, the Hitter's Triple Crown obviously is home runs, RBI, and average. For a pitcher, it is wins, ERA, and strikeouts. They need to lead the league in all three of those categories and then they win the pitchers triple crown so randy johnson did in fact do that in 2002 hands down the best pitcher in the national league 2.32 era in 260 innings pitched 334 strikeouts just think about that number right so so think about that 334 strikeouts the year before in 2001 372 strikeouts. This man was a K machine, the big friggin' unit. His whip was 1.031, he had 11.6 strikeouts per nine, and he only allowed 71 walks. So with 334 strikeouts and only 71 walks, that is a great ratio right there. He also pitched eight complete games and four of them were shutouts. So he would go the distance, he would strike out batters, he would have a low ERA. This dude was just an amazing amazing pitcher. Of course, this year he was an all-star. He finished seventh place in the MVP voting, and he was, of course, the Cy Young winner. Now, I think it's fair to say that if this card were to be a card in MLB The Show, he would be a 99 overall. If you give Justin Verlander a 99 overall for that postseason, if you give Bob Feller a 99, if you get Vita Blue a 99, Randy Johnson 100% is a 99 overall card, so easily one of the best pitchers in the game if he were to be a legend next year. All right, so now we're going to move to the flashback hitter of the week. We're going to the offensive side, and this is a guy who had a really, really great two 
2017 season. Kind of went a little bit under the radar because of the team that he plays for. He's not on the big market, you know, uh, Dodgers. Red Sox, Yankees, you know, none of those guys. But he has shown the past two seasons that he can be one of the best second basemen in the game, at least offensively. And that is Jonathan Scope. And we are going to do a 2017 All Star Jonathan Scope. This card was suggested by a few people Ozyboy19, Walker Tube, Mouth Drop Gaming, Cesar Benitez, Owen Frank, Slim Shady, Scott Morrison, Bryson Betts, Alejandro Sanchez. Joe Santa, Renegade 13, Shrani Mac Gaming, and Latvian Unicorn. So thank you guys for suggesting Jonathan Scope. And, you know, it's it's crazy to think about how good of a season this guy actually had last year. And some people are going to say that he should be a breakout card. But honestly, 2016 was a pretty good year for him as well. 2017, he actually made the All-Star team. So I would give him an All-Star card. Because 25 home runs and 82 RBIs and, and a 260 average in 2016 is pretty freaking good. So I would look at that more as his breakout year. But 2017 was a fantastic year for Scope for the Orioles. 293 average, 32 home runs, 105 RBIs. Those are MVP caliber numbers at the plate right there. 841 OPS, 338 on base percentage. He did strike out a little bit too much for my liking. 142 strikeouts and only 35 walks. So he definitely has to cut down on that. His vision would probably be a little bit lower. But he was a 5.1 win player for the Baltimore Orioles last season. Very, very good all around. Also, he only stole one base. So he's not really going to be a speed threat. This guy is mainly just going to be a offensive threat with the bat. He's going to get some doubles. He's going to get some home runs. He's going to score runs for you. That's what Jonathan Scope is there for. And it's pretty awesome that he made the all-star team with all the other second basemen in the league. You know, in the American League, you've got Dozier, you got Cano, you got Altuve. The fact that he was still able to make the all-star team with all those other big second basemen around him is very impressive. So... Jonathan Scope should get a lot more respect, and I think this next year could be a very big year for Jonathan Scope if he continues his trend of getting better the past two seasons. So for his dream card, his 2017 All-Star card, I would give him a 92 overall. Some people might think this is going to be a little bit low, but the fact is he's not going to have, a, like, his fielding's going to be fine, and his speed is going to be a little bit low. I mean, he doesn't really run. He only stole one base. With MLB The Show, the way they rate second baseman is if you have really good defense and speed that's going to weigh a lot more heavily in your favor so with the way the actual position is weighted i don't see him being higher than like a 92 to a 94 probably 92 is where i'm going to go for this card but he would be an offensive stud at the plate that is for sure all right now we're going to move on to our flashback pitcher of the week and this was an interesting one this is a comment that when i was going through all 500 comments this one kind of stood out to me i kind of liked this idea maple leaf gaming said 2016 impact veteran rich Hill. And I looked at Rich Hill's stats and I was like, all right, you know, I kind of could see this card being a, a pretty solid left-handed arm. Now, I know we already have the 80 overall Rich Hill, so we do already have a flashback for that. But I think 2016 as an impact veteran would be a pretty solid gold card. 2.12 ERA and 110 innings pitched. 129 strikeouts with only 33 walks so that ratio right there is really solid he had a whip underneath one and then he got traded to the dodgers halfway through the season with josh reddick to go from oakland and he got injured a little bit so who knows what would have happened if he would have pitched a complete season but from his numbers i think this would be a pretty solid impact veteran card it definitely wouldn't be a diamond the, num the numbers aren't even close to being a diamond but i could see him being anywhere from an 85 to an 87 i do think he'd be a gold a low gold though and no no, it's not the 97 overall rich hill all right so going into the very last card of the episode guys this is another one that is so highly suggested and i think if this card were to be in the game in this specific year he would be one of the best overall cards that you could possibly get the guy I'm talking about is Larry Walker. Just like Randy Johnson, this guy has suggested every single video. For this one, it was Sparky Gaming, Pinner Pin, Aiden's Lane, Josh Pereira, and Colton Pembleton. So thank you guys for the suggestion on Larry Walker. It was only a matter of time before this guy got his dream card in this series. And I think if we were to get a Larry Walker card, we all know what season that we want to see. And that is 1997. Now, when I tell you guys these stats, just sit back and think about how good of a card this would be. I just want you to, to, to think about this. So first of all, he is a left-handed hitter, so he's going to be nice on that part of the plate. But he had a 366 average, 49 home runs, 130 RBIs, 33 stolen bases, 452 on-base percentage, 720 slugging, 
1,172 OPS. That is one of the best offensive seasons of all time. And I don't care about the Coors Field effect. I don't care about him playing in Colorado. That doesn't matter to me. If you can hit 49 home runs, it doesn't matter where the hell you play. He also is a great fielder. He won the gold glove this year. He was an all-star. He was a silver slugger. And of course, he won the MVP. He had a 9.8 wins above replacement. He was almost responsible for 10 wins for the Rockies that season. But just picture this card. The contact and the power would be way up there. The vision would be high. The fielding, he won the gold glove. He has a cannon. He's gonna be a good fielder. And 33 stolen bases, he has speed. All three big parts of the player card are going to be pretty high. This is gonna be very similar to the Roberto Alomar. It's gonna be very similar to Carlos Beltran, Andre Dawson. Larry Walker would be one of the best cards in the game if they modeled him after the 1997 season. In my opinion, easily a 99 overall easily i feel like this card should be very hard to achieve so collect all the national league maybe larry walker is the reward maybe a 12 win battle royale reward it doesn't matter just larry walker has to be in the game and if he's in the game he is one of honestly my end game cards like and the game hasn't even come out yet like this card would be amazing 99 overall hardware 100%. There's there's no question he would be anything other than a 99. So guys, there you go. Those are the four cards for this video. We had 1997 Hardware Larry Walker, 2017 All-Star Jonathan Scope, 2002 Hardware Randy Johnson, and 2016 Impact Veteran Rich Hill. So let me know what you thought of these cards, guys. Would you want to get these cards? Would you use them if they were in the game? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments. Also, make sure to leave your suggestions for the next episode of Dream Cards. If your card did not get selected for this episode, Go ahead and leave it in again, as well as leave in a different suggestion so you have another opportunity. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Drop a thumbs up on this video if you do enjoy this series. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.